the way to think about it is you draw your vanishing your sorry your horizon you um, pick a, a, two vanishing points and then everything has to come from those two vanishing points meaning all your uh, perspective lines so So if we're going to construct that room in the press core, and I'm sure you've seen these gradients before, right? Okay. And all these lines follow mathematical rules, meaning if you have a floor with square tiles and each tile is the same size, okay? The way you do it is you you draw your one tile. Okay, using the perspective lines here. Okay, it's like how do I do a, a square, a perfect square in perspective? You basically draw your perspective lines. Okay, you establish one length there. You take half that distance. Okay, all right, and then that creates its own perspective line like that. Okay, all right, that's the halfway point. And then you take this and see where that line and that line intersect right there. This, the, this, this dot, this point, this point, basically, if you connect those two and draw a line, it draws a point here. So the, this this length and this length are now the same in perspective the way I've done it okay and now you can complete the rest of that okay now to figure out where this next distance is relative to this distance okay I don't know why this it chose to <laughs> to render this at like 30 dpi it's very grainy um, Okay. To figure out what this distance is to this, it's going to get shorter and shorter as it goes off and, and towards that vanishing line, right? Vanishing point, excuse me. Okay. And um, so how do we know what that distance is? Well, I'll tell you. You basically have this point and this point. You have this point and this point. So it intersects this line right here at that point. So you take this, and you connect, you go through this point from here. If you draw a line like that with a ruler, it knocks, right? It creates a, a line right there. And then you draw the vanishing point made the line towards that other vanishing point and you just basically repeat it it's a step and repeat using this point these points here and these midpoints that you've created so this point one goes through two and creates point three over here and you just keep repeating it or you can just kind of fake it like this Right, and then you do the exact same thing. So you go, this is tedious, <laughs> and it is because uh, um, it's math. Okay, um, so the half point here, you would measure that out. All right, basically do it in every stack and that's how you do a tile floor okay but what happens if you notice is that if you do it 
the lines get more and more concentrated towards the horizon line and in a way you almost get too much detail so you have to take that into account and so you, you might actually go and, and, and lighten the lines sort of off in that distance so that they're darker in the foreground so the idea with perspective is you're tricking the mind with lines to create depth um, but again if you start drawing every single line every single tile as you get towards that horizon line they get super dense and in a way they no longer like look like tiles it starts looking like a big black line so you're un you're working against yourself so sometimes you kind of fade off and do less right less detail like in a video game there's more detail in the foreground as you go off the distance it's just sort of square clumps because if they put that same level of detail far away it would actually make it look like it's much closer, defeating the whole point of creating this illusion of, of depth. All right, so we've create, created this grid. And so if you have someone standing up here, on this tile floor, their body also goes in perspective. So their shoulder line goes like that. Their two hands go here. The tips of their feet, if they're parallel and equidistant from the uh, heels of both feet, also go in perspective. The belt goes in perspective, right? If they're wearing sunglasses, the sunglasses go in perspective like that. Now, the cool thing about it is if there's someone that's kind of further away, based on this kind of pink uh, perspective line, if that person is the same height as the person in the foreground, they are shrunk in relative size. Okay. But if they're shorter, they can go here. All right. And the reason why we know this person is shorter than this person, the person to their right, it's because they're shorter in this in this in this uh, perspective grid that we created, and if there are people in the background, same thing. They all follow this perspective grid. All right. So if there's someone in the extreme foreground, you got to imagine their feet down here. Their head would probably be up here. Right, if these people are commuters walking towards work. Okay. So then if there's buildings, all right, this building here would have a doorway that would fit this person, right? these windows would be in perspective. And you would use the same method of find, going from this point, find the halfway point here. This creates equidistant windows, where the distance between the windows and the width of the windows are the same. If the, if the width between the windows is wider than the windows, you have to create the halfway point here, find this. I mean, it's a little trickier, but it can be done. All right. And once you have the one when the two windows set up to figure out what where that third window is in relationship to the first two it's all unlocked by doing these sort of uh, uh, halfway points right to figure out where that other last window and then you can just sort of build off of that So that's, that's what you need to know about perspective. Now, three-point perspective, okay, this is called two-point perspective. Th three-point three perspective is if you just take a, a line and you go through one of your vanishing points. If you're trying to create like a angled roof on a house and you're saying, Jim, how do I do a house like this if this is the straight-on view? How do, I, how do I get this roof line, this roof line put into perspective if that house is tilted in perspective? All right, so here's a simple tilted roof. If this is the middle part of the house, 
All right? You draw that line to this line, all right? And that line to that line that gives you the roof. But if you have an item that um the way you know also can do it is you draw a go off a per perpendicular line off your vanishing point, draw a dot. So if there is an angled object here in the foreground, it would go like that in perspective. And so from the side, that would look like this. So that's how you do things that aren't uh, parallel to the ground in perspective. You have to go to third point, uh, three point perspective, right? So this house, which is asymmetrical from the front, right? Okay. I don't know what kind of house is that. These, uh, these perspective lines go up to these points, which are connect up. They're parallel up here. All right, so these points should go down here. So I've kind of, kind of screwed up a little bit. So that's how you would draw a house that had a weird roof like that, okay? And sometimes you do have chimneys that are, are weirdly shaped, or you get uh, cathedrals that have unusual shapes. It's easy to draw straight on, but as soon as you put in perspective, what do those angles look like? You need to go up here, do the, here's one, po here's one point, here's two points, Here's three points. That is called three-point perspective. This is a 90-degree angle here. Okay, so this is straight on. This is a straight-on lens. If you have a fisheye lens, what happens is you do all this, and you basically distort it. The nice thing about doing a distorted lens It's the same thing, but all the lines are kind of, the arcs are parallel to each other, and they go towards those vanishing points. And maybe that horizon line has a curve to it like that. So again, if you do it enough times, you kind of eyeball it, but there's a mathematical... way to establish all this. Right, so everyone would have a slight curve it, curve to themselves here. Less distortion in the center, more distortion. Like if this is the spear, the trident, sorry, the Aquaman, it would be Distort it over here. If you held it here, probably not as distorted. It might be slight curvature to to that line there. Yeah, Kim Junji is a master at this, and he'll do stuff where um, pe you know you're looking at the underside of, of of people in this kind of curved perspective, right? Alright, so if someone's kind of floating off. Right. And if there's multiple people floating in perspective to one another. And then this person, you're looking more down on them. Alright, so 
there's a way to kind of create that illusion.